Revealing art in After Effects can be a time-consuming task to say the least, usually involving countless hours of masking and tweaking keyframes. Enter Autofill, a plugin that, in the right situations, can help speed up this process and even make it fun. But how much can it really do, and how far can you push it? Hi, I'm Andrew Marston, and today I'll be covering just this. I'll show you how Autofill works, a few examples, and going over a few of its limitations. In this video, you'll learn what Autofill does and in what situations it might come in handy, how to use the basic controls of Autofill, how to apply the gigantic library of presets it comes with, one way I use Autofill with other techniques to create interesting edge reveals, and a few points to consider before buying. To get the most out of this tutorial, check out Autofill on aescripts.com. There is a free trial version available if you want to follow along. So, as the name implies, Autofill automatically fills a layer based on either its alpha or its lightness. Now, usually to create this sort of reveal by hand, you would have to spend a long time creating track mats and or masks that perfectly fit your art and then animate those with a lot of keyframes to create a similar look. And anyone who's done this before knows how time consuming that can be. But this is exactly where autofill could save you a lot of time, especially if the layer has clearly defined transparency or colors like vector art, autofill performs really well. So some examples that come to mind would be icons, logos, uh, plants, just to name a few. But really, once you know how to use it, autofill can be handy when revealing pretty much anything. And even it can be combined with other techniques to create some interesting looks, especially on the edges of a reveal. All right, so here we are in After Effects, and we're gonna check out exactly how Autofill works. So if we apply the effect and scrub through the timeline, we can see that already, right out of the box, that Autofill is automatically filling the alpha of our layer. And this is from the center point of this crosshair, so if we move the crosshair someplace else, someplace that has alpha, like this transparency land that we're in now, that won't work. But this G, for example, now we're animating this word on from left to right, kind of like we're writing it on. And you probably noticed that it looks a little staccato. And I've found that using autofill, when you change some of the controls, sometimes this will happen. And the solution is to click this re-simulate button and autofill will recalculate the entire animation. The other thing you've probably noticed is that there's a bit of a ghost of our image still on screen. And I should warn you that this will render if you leave it when you click the render button. And the way to disable that is by unchecking the preview input button. But let's just leave that on for now while we go through some of the controls. And I should mention that I'm not gonna go through every single control because it's quite a deep plugin, but I'm gonna hit the ones that I think are the most helpful, starting with growth source. So there are three different modes that you can use autofill in. There's the points mode that we're in now, and then noise and layer, which we'll get to in just a little bit. So in points mode, you can have more than one point. You can have up to five points. So if I just click two, now another crosshair pops up. And if I place that, for example, at the very end of this word, now if we scrub through, the animation will meet in the middle because it's animating from both of these points. Next is radius, which is essentially the size of your brush, if you will. And the greater the value here, then the larger the area that is being filled at one time. Moving on, we have speed. So the default is five, which is a little bit slow, but if I change that to something like 20 and render it, you can see how much faster that is. And so that is literally the speed of the animation. Moving on, we have border strength. So border strength is basically how far into the transparency region autofill looks to find alpha for it to fill. So you can see that these dots of the eyes, they're not being filled because they're kind of like islands of alpha in a sea of transparency. But if we reduce this, let's just bring it way down to like 15. Now autofill has found them because it's reached far enough into the transparency to find those alphas. And if we reanimate, you can see that it has actually found these dots. Moving down the list, we have the speed map group of controls. And I think speed map is easiest to understand if you enable this view speed map 
button. And you can see what's happened is that Autofill has blurred and lightened the alpha and then composited it against a black background. And essentially lighter areas will fill faster than darker areas. So that's why if I disable this speed map, we get this rounded edge instead of a flat edge. It's because the center of this stroke is lighter than the edges which have been blurred into a black background. And if we change the mode to none, you can see that everything is just being animated at the same speed with a flat edge. Okay, so the last option for speed map mode is custom layer. And you can actually create your own custom speed map layer, which I have done for demonstration purposes. If we unshy this, we have a shape layer that's just a rectangle with the gradient ramp effect applied going from white to black. And if we select that layer and make sure effects and masks are being used and we play back the animation, you can see that it's animating faster in the lighter regions and slower in the darker regions. Moving on to the compositing controls, we have ignore previous effects if there are effects stacked on top of this in the layer stack. Then you also have alpha inverted mat, which just plays the animation backwards. And then we have color fill, so you can just fill the alpha completely with a color and then composite over original. And if you check this, then you will get a blend mode option and you can choose basically how to write this image onto itself. What blend mode do you want to use? Now let's take a look at the noise mode, which have already pre-prepared something in advance. So here we have a map of Antarctica, which is a JPEG image, so it is all alpha. We have no specific point to pick to grow from. So this is a good example of when you might want to use noise. And if we play this back, we can see what happens. Autofill is creating noise and using that to fill the image. And if you're familiar with other noise effects like fractal or turbulent noise, then the controls will look very familiar. There is also a duration in frames for how long you want the animation to take, as well as your speed and border strength. And the other options are the same as in the points mode. Okay, moving on to layer mode. So here we have some vector art that represents circuitry that we want to reveal with autofill. And if I unshy these layers and then solo just the pre-comp with the circuits, you can see that this layer here just has the circuits. And if we enable autofill in points mode, the problem becomes obvious. We have one, two, three, four times four. We have 16 points that we want to start this reveal from because we want to go from the center outward. But the maximum number of points that the points mode gives us is five. So in this case, we can switch to layer mode. Now we have the option to choose a layer that we can use to start this animation from. Either it's alpha or it's Luma. We also have a button called Create Layer. And if we click that, then Autofill creates this white solid layer. And I'm going to put that behind our circuits so we can see what's going on. And now we can use the alpha of this layer to start our animation. But because it's all alpha, I'm going to go ahead and make a mask just around these center points. And I'm going to go ahead and disable this. And going back to our autofill effect, we can see that now, because all 16 of these start points overlap the alpha of our masked solid, the animation will reach the entire piece of art. And aside from being able to select a layer, all of the other controls for the layer mode are the same that we've already gone over. So Autofill comes with a ton of awesome presets that you can use to quickly create some cool looks. And we're going to go over how to do that right now. Once you've downloaded Autofill in the presets folder, there are several After Effects files. And if you drag and drop the presets.aep to the project panel of whatever project you're working on, then it will automatically import. And to use these presets, we just toggle into the newly imported folder and they've made it dead easy to work with. Under the one Your Logo comp, we just open that up. This is where your art would go. So let's go back to our points example and we'll take the text layer in that and we'll paste that into our one your logo comp and disable their logo. And then the next step is to go into the edit autofill composition. And here is where if we look at the effect controls, they've already put autofill. I'm going to say preview input so I can see where to put this crosshair. I'll put it back on the G and then I'm going to click re-simulate. 
Then back in the project panel, you can choose to edit your speed map if you want to. The default is the automatically generated speed map. And in this case, that's gonna be just fine. And then you're pretty much good to go. You just toggle into this presets folder, find the preset that you want, hit render, and you've got your new look. So here's a quick montage of a few of the presets. And I wanna also point out that a few of these presets, especially in the complex folder, can take a little bit of time to render. So once you've got autofill set up to reveal an image, there's a bunch of different ways that you can then use that reveal in conjunction with other techniques to create some interesting looks. And at the risk of this video being a little longer than it needs to be, I just want to show you one way that I use autofill all the time, and that is to create an edge for revealing an image, this yellow part here. So let me go through this setup really quickly. If we look at the source name, you can see that these are both the same pre-comp. And in that pre-comp, we have this vector art of a plant where I've applied autofill. It looks like this. And then I also created a custom speed map. In some parts of this image, like around the stems of the leaves, it was a bit too thin, and so the reveal will happen too slowly. And then I also added a turbulent noise as a luma mat to create a little bit more variation in the speed of the reveal. So back to our main comp, where we have two copies of this pre-comp, I just offset them a little bit so that the bottom one reveals slightly ahead of the top one. And then using CC Toner, I colored that bottom layer more of a yellow, and I also added a drop shadow. And then it gets covered by the top copy after about three frames so that it looks like this reveal has an edge. And if you get creative using alpha mats and the set matte effect, then you can create much more intricate looks like these, which I use autofill to create. So autofill is a great plugin, but before you go and spend your hard-earned money on it, I just want to mention a few things. The first is that you can only control the speed of the reveal animation by the lightness of the speed map. So if you need control over the reveal of certain areas of different pieces of art, then you'd probably have to get creative, maybe by making multiple copies of the art and then masking them out and applying autofill to each with slightly different speed values. But there are no keyframes to tweak the interpolation of to really dial in that animation. The second is that every point from which autofill fills layers start at the same time. So if you needed to offset this timing, then again, you'd need to get creative, maybe with multiple copies of the layer that have autofill each applied. Or another solution would be to keyframe the position of these points so that they overlap the art at different times. Next, I've found while using the plugin that art with small intricate details can sometimes require a decent amount of fiddling with the autofill settings, or in some cases, it was easier to just break it into multiple layers completely. And lastly, complex art or some of the complex presets can be a bit resource intensive on your computer, especially if you have multiple copies of autofill going on in the same composition, and this can lead to longer preview or render times. All right, hopefully now you know enough about autofill to decide if it's right for you. And if you find our videos helpful, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for this YouTube channel, as well as the like button on this video. And otherwise, I'm Andrew Marston. Thanks for watching and have a good day.